Hello, this is Zmaster587, and welcome to the change log for Advanced Directory 0 0.6.4. Um, there are some significant changes in this version. First, we have these data cables, which are used to automatically transfer data from the satellite terminals over to the AstroData processor, which was formerly known as the uh, Planetary Assembly, I, can't, I think it was. I don't remember the name of it. I changed it a week or so ago. Uh, there are significant, some significant changes to the uh, structure of this as well. Uh, for example, the planet selector has been replaced with a uh, stone slab as it's no longer required. And we now have an output hatch where there used to be an input hatch over here. This will form the structure. Uh, another structure has been changed as well. The um, observatory now has most of its blocks, its iron blocks, replaced with stone. This is because the iron version was way too expensive and was only ever really meant as a test structure. Uh, that's why the coal was there too, which has since been replaced with glass to make things a bit cheaper and have it make more sense. The data pipe can also be connected to the data bus as well. The data pipes will take data out of a block if it is provided with a redstone signal. Um, I have six satellites in orbit right now. I'm going to download some data from this mass scanner real quick. You can see that the uh, data is going down over here. It is being transferred to the astrobody data processor over here. You can see this is now filling up. Uh, in order to suck data out, you need to give it a redstone signal, as I think I said a minute ago. Turning this off will cease the data flow. See it stopped. And it started again. This is true for all, this works for all types of data. You cannot put data back into the satellite terminal, as that doesn't really make any sense. If I come back with the Astro Body Data Processor, you may wonder why the name was changed. Well, the reason I changed this was because I thought that the planet should be able to change the uh, what planet you want to go to in the rocket. So, yeah, so that was changed a uh, version or two ago. Um, but that left the uh, planet data processor without a use. And there have been several people that requested uh, asteroid mining. I have the, uh, this, I'm proud to say that this version of advanced rocketry now has asteroid mining in an automated form. In future versions, you, you will be able to visit the asteroid in person and mine it by hand. So how the astrobody data processor works now is the interface is very similar as, as the way it looked before. You can still do research. So if I do mass research, you'll see that this uh, well, it's not decreasing because this asteroid ship is already full of, da of um, mass data, but this would fill up all the way to 2000, 2000, 2000 for uh, composition data, distance data, and mass data. Each of these three different types of data does something different. The composition data increases the uh, chance of a block mi being mined from an asteroid being ore. So if you have zero composition data, you're going to get a lot of stone and probably no ore. Uh, distance data decreases the chance that you're going to miss the asteroid entirely. If you don't research this, there's a good chance you'll completely miss it and not get anything back. Um, and mass data controls how much resources you get back. So if you have almost no mass data, you're going to get very little resources back. And obviously, if you research all of these to their fullest, you have a, you're going to get a decent harvest back from any mission. So you can craft asteroid ships out of tracking circuits and data units. By clicking the process discovery button here, I will do this now. So I'll take a so I'll take a chip and process it. So you can see it's processing. So take a minute. The uh, it'll automatically put its output into an output hatch if there is free space, which is why it's hopping underneath here. Now, these are all asteroid chips that have just been programmed the process discovery button. Uh, once you do that, uh, you can either put the asteroid ship down here or into the input hatch. Asteroid ships that have been 
discovered, so to speak, and put in the input hatch will automatically be put to this slot in the bottom here when it is free. And then you can have the research, the, all the research is running, and then once this is done, it'll, or once all three of those data types have been researched their fullest, the asteroid ship will be stuck into the output hatch where it can be extracted and processed for later use. So I'm going to take a fully researched asteroid ship I have here and put it in a rocket. And so we'll see, so I can show you how the uh, asteroid mining missions work. Uh, once the asteroid ship is placed in the guidance computer, you can do this, you can even do this with the rocket assembled. I chose not to because I wanted to explain another block. But when you do take a mission, the chip is consumed. So when it, when the rocket comes back down, make sure you check the guidance computer and put a new chip in there before you launch it. Otherwise, there is a good chance that the ship will be lost. But this also brings me to our new block, the drill. The drill can be placed near the top of a rocket. The more drills you have, the faster it goes through mining asteroids. If you don't put any drills on there, you don't get anything back. As you can see, I have quite a few drills on the top here. It does look kind of ugly. Um, I may add shrouds or something later. All right, so also you'll want chests on your rocket. Without chests, you won't be able to collect anything because you need storage. I am not I am not 100 sure if it will work with mods like iron chests or not, as I have not yet coded explicit support for it. It may work just via the I inventory check, but again, I'm not 100 percent sure it will. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break and replace the rock assembly machine real quick so I can show you guys another feature that was added in this version. Alright, so we've got the rock assembly machine. We're going to build our rocket. Alright, the rocket should be built. Good, I can see it. Alright, a new feature that has been added in Advanced Rockery 0.6.4 is the ability to link certain tiles with the rocket assembly machine, which in turn links it with any rocket that is built or lands on this pad. So, for example, I have a rocket on the pad here. I'm going to link the fueling station by shift-right-clicking it, and then I'm going to shift-right-click on the rocket assembly machine. You will see there is now a white dotted line connecting the two, and the fueling station has begun consuming power and fuel. It's filling up the rocket. See the fuel bar going up. See, I need I need to link the rocket monitoring station as well. You can also link a monitoring station with an assembly machine as well. You will not see the dotted line with it. However, if you look into the monitoring station, you'll see you now have the rocket statistics. Something new for the asteroid missions that I found very useful is the ability to link the output and input hatches to a rocket. So if your rocket contains cargo and you want to automatically unload it, you can link the output hatch to the rocket assembly machine like so. If the rocket is completely empty, it will emit a redstone signal, as indicated by this lamp. A similar situation occurs with the fueling station. When the rocket is full of fuel, it emits a redstone signal. This here is an input hatch. It will emit a redstone signal when the rocket is full of cargo. I will not connect this right now. I will do that after the mission. So I'm now going to launch it. I'm making sure I have my guidance, com my guidance computer set for the asteroid ship. Inventories are empty. So I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And we'll see that the redstone lamp is turned off. In both places that the rocket is no longer linked. Oh, that's a bug. It should not still be connected. I will have that fixed. I will come back when the mission is complete. You can view once this reaches orbit, the mission progress will change to display what type of mission the rocket is conducting. Right now there's only the asteroid mining mission. More will be added in the future. The screen bar will fill up as the mission progresses. And I will be right back as soon as this mission finishes. Alright. Uh, time has elapsed and the rocket is about 
finish with its mission. These three bars will fill up, as I said before. This top bar is progress to the destination. This middle bar is um, mission progress at the destination, and the bottom bar is return. As you can see the altitude bar is dropping, velocity is negative. The rocket is coming down to land. If I look up, it should eventually become visible in the sky. Upon landing, it should automatically it will be automatically be linked to anything that you would link to the rocket assembling machine before. I forgot I have a ton of garbage in these chests already from previous mining missions and redstone lamps. As you can see, it's now been linked up to the fueling station again, and the redstone lamp here is now off. And also notice that there's ore inside the output hatch now. That is from the asteroid mining mission. See that? There's a ton of ore in here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin extracting all the ore. This will take a few minutes. It extracts ore extremely quickly. Now this output hatch will pull a stack at a time, or a stack per tick from the rocket. The input hatch will input a stack per tick into the rocket. So this will take a few moments to complete. Now this also opens the opportunities for you for you to build uh, automatic transport systems between planets as well. Uh, with a little bit of redstone logic, it should be relatively easy. Okay, you can see the redstone lamp is now on. This means our rocket has been filled up. I mean emptied. Right, I've got some these chests connected to an input hatch over here, which I will now link. Alright, it's linked to the rocket. So I'm now going to turn this on and pump the locks out. It should take a relatively short period of time. Right, so the light is turned off over here. Uh, some of some of the items have been pulled out. We'll probably add in one of the next few versions is an on-off toggle inside the hatch itself. That way, it is possible to control whether or not it should start pulling items from the rocket or not. This is filling up. The rocket is now full. You can see that this emits redstone and is dropping items everywhere because buildcraft pipes tend to drop stuff when an inventory is full. And this is full. And asteroid mining missions should pull every type of ore registered to the ore dictionary as ore some name on mining missions. Right now there is no discrepancy between common and rare. Actually, take that back. I was planning to do that. Right now, it only gets certain vanilla ores, as well as advanced rock for tinted copper. Eventually, it will also have a chance of getting rare ores as well. Uh, that should be coming up in sooner updates. Another thing that was changed in this version is there's now a config option to uh, change how the algorithm for uh, Atmosphere uh, assessments. If I go into the advanced rocketry config, there is now a performance thing here. I have it set to three because I was testing the experimental uh, volume based threading. And for the most part, that's basically really all that's changed. Hopefully the next few updates will include new satellites and possibly gas giants and gas mining. Now have a great day. Have a good night, wherever you are. Stay well.